Hello, everybody, and welcome to Education 4.0, brought to you by Dang Teach at CCSD. In today's presentation, um, I'm going to talk about Education 4.0, or the future of education. This is a presentation I gave to our faculty members about, about six months ago last year. And hopefully this presentation will explain um, all the changes going on with the campus and the start of, uh, of putting all of our content uh, more available. Okay, so this presentation was originally presented by Dr. Kevin Ahern. He's at, the, uh, he's at Oregon State University. And he explains uh, Education 4.0 and his strategies and one thing he developed and it's on its second edition is a free textbook for biochemistry uh, it's not like a traditional textbook it is html based very interactive and it's free and easy so he records his lectures posts um, a lot of information for biochemistry online and he also has a free book and if you want to check out the full and complete presentation i include the link here on the screen and that presentation really inspired me to come up with pharmacy technician free and easy uh, might not be html at the beginning but um coming soon you'll have pharmacy technician free and easy the changing world of education so state funding has actually declined, whereas the portion paid from the student has actually increased. And nowadays, students are paying more for tuition than the state, state contribution. Student debt, this might be the next bubble. So student debt's over a trillion dollars. And as we know, with student debt, it is not resolved through uh, bankruptcy. So that debt will stay with you um, pretty much for eternity. So what that means is it's very costly nowadays to get an education. So what has increased the cost of education? Well, let's see. Tuition fees for the last, looks like 20 years, increase by 130%. So that's not too bad. That's not a real big increase. I think the biggest increase is textbooks. It is now 26% of tuition costs. So that is a quarter of your cost just goes to textbooks. So let's see, since 78, so what's that, 40 years? So about, four, yeah, exactly 40 years. That's an eight-fold increase for textbook costs. And to compare, medical expenses only increase about 600. So textbooks are beating out medical expenses. Ebooks, um, in his experience, Dr. Ahern, it's not a significant savings. Also, you might get limited access and a limited time to use the ebooks. So overall, not a very effective cost saving measure. Overall, things are still increasing. Let's take a look at the changing times. Uh, we used to have a lot of borders. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Let's get rid of that A there. So we have borders, books, and music. And uh, for them, they did start an electronic books division back in the 90s, early 2000s. However, they didn't think they really needed it, so they didn't change. And they actually sold uh, a lot of their electronic books division to, of course, Amazon. So that's the new world order. Amazon has been changing with times. And as I first used Amazon, it was just for textbooks. I remember going to college, and that's where I look for cheaper textbook alternatives than at the college bookstore. So next, uh, well, they improve. We have Amazon, and of course, most people have Amazon Prime. And what's next with Amazon? 
Well, they were thinking of doing those drones deliveries. But what I do know now is they're doing pizza delivery, unmanned car pizza deliveries. I think they're testing that in Phoenix or, or some area. Downfall with that is you still have to get out of your house, walk to the curb to pick up the pizza. But I'm sure they'll, they'll figure that out. And I guess drones, they always wanted to do this. I haven't seen one deliver anything yet. But that might just be the future now that we have automated driving cars. Let's take a look at records and CDs. We used to have record stores, right? Tower Records, um, Blockbuster also had music as well. But of course, what happened to them? The iPod, right? Or the Zune or any other musical design, device. It used to be you get to put an hour, 90 minutes on a cassette tape, uh, 74 minutes on a CD. Now you got hundreds, thousands of music, of songs, sorry, at your fingertips. What about movies? Movies we used to have uh, Blockbuster, but of course we know what happened to them. We went online, we got Hulu, Netflix, a bunch of other services now that can bring you your movies directly to you. Newspaper. So the newspaper is given way to, well, the tablet. So every newspaper nowadays publishes some kind of abbreviated electronic form. Now this doesn't mean that there isn't a need for a record store. Coming back are the vinyl record stores. So those are still serving the community. Also, there's certain video stores that are still working. There is a pizza place that has a video store inside. So if you come in and pick up a video and the next time you order pizza, they, they can actually pick up your movies when they drop off your pizza. So there are some places that still are surviving and bringing that community uh, to the neighborhood. But nowadays, of course, the community will be mostly online. Question is, are universities next? And hopefully, Education 4.0 will prevent us from going the way of the dodo. All right, let's get into Education Point 1. This is the traditional education model. Uh, Dr. Ahern called it Doctors Within Borders. So students have to come to campus. They got to move out of the house, come to campus. Classes are on campus. Everything is campus-based. It's the old brick and mortar model. And of course, we know the old brick and mortar model for stores these days. Uh, it's given away or it's losing its space to the online stores. Physical presence is required and there is schedule limitations. So if there's not enough classroom space, not enough instructors, then you're not gonna be able to take that course. One important limitation is lab. So for sciences and medical schools, uh, like CCSD, we offer medical specialty, lab components are very important. And the best way to get the lab component is to actually be on campus. The I generation. So the internet generation, uh, they're free range, tech savvy learners. So they actually like to go out and seek the information. So students these days, they may not memorize all the facts and figures that we used to do. Uh, nowadays, they can just search things up, tell them uh, where they might be able to find the answers, and they prefer it that way. They like to seek it on their own. They are mobile. And one of the first things, no matter where I go with my nieces and nephews, they always ask if there's Wi-Fi there. And if there isn't, they just tether off my phone. And of course, they socialize in network networks. So here's Snapchat. Um, Snapchat and Instagram, they're competing. Uh, Facebook, I believe, bought out Instagram. This brings us to Education 2.0. So that's going to be some online courses are offered. So the school is traditionally still uh, brick and mortar, but they do offer some classes. Now, this is very important. About 
25 years ago with the emergence of online instruction. Um, people didn't value it. Um, they looked down upon an online degree. But nowadays, two-thirds of academic leaders, so campus leaders, they say that the value of instruction online is comparable, equal to instruction on campus. So there is more acceptance of online format. Another advantage is their senior year. Students only have a few classes left. They can go home, save some money, and take those last remaining classes online. The growth of online enrollment is increasing. And maybe um, it's because of the sign of times. Now here at CCSD, we have a sister campus within our network, Independence University. So for some of our students who may need to stop going on ground, medical reason, personal reasons, we can give them a course or two online uh, with our sister campus, Independence uh, University. So I think we should uh, take advantage of that much, much more. Education 3.0, free mobile content. So if you ever surf the web, all the information is there for you. If you watch videos on YouTube, you'll know that there's a lot of instructional information as well. So we have open educational resources. So things free and easy, like biochemistry free and easy, and uh, coming soon, pharmacy technician free and easy. Massive open online courses, or MOOCs. So these prestigious schools, Ivy League schools, uh, do offer a lot of their courses online. They record every uh, lecture and do have it available. Some instructors go as far as posting assignments and exams from uh, previous uh, class sessions, previous course sessions. Yale course, uh, iTunes, Khan Academy, edX, those are some uh, uh, notable MOOCs available. However, with the online models, it's open access, it's free, however, you don't get credit. Now, it's not intended for getting credits, it's for those who want to learn to allow them a place to learn. So a lot of people just like learning on their own. They don't need the, um, the credits. They're not moving towards a degree or whatnot. That's kind of like me. I like uh, attending these courses, uh, following them through, and they are pretty good. I learned quite a lot from them. So MIT has their open courseware. May or may not still be available. I think they may have changed that. Whereas the eCampus, is tuition base and you will get credit. So every year, uh, MIT's open courseware gets about 70 million visitors, and iTunes U, iTunes University, gets about 100 million downloads per year. So there definitely is a market for these open resources. All right, Education 4.0. So it's a blend of Education 2.0 and Education 3.0. The math's a little funny, but Dr. Ahern coined it Doctors Without Borders. Did I spell it wrong again? Huh. A university without physical boundaries. So it's easy to discover, mobile, uh, He's discovered by mobile free range learners. So what I've been doing is loading a lot of my lectures on YouTube. And the next thing I'm going to do is start doing the assignments, classwork and assignments, making videos of those as well. So those attending my online course or my MOOC course, um, they'll feel like if they're in the classroom. Yeah, no limitation. So international audience so anybody in the world who have access to the internet will be able to learn so education 4.0 is suitable for free and paid elements so free lectures we used to use a zoom service but the students will have to download zoom 
download the program, log in, punch in to access the video and or the live stream. So we want to put our content where the students are. So loading up in YouTube and now you two have live streaming. So as long as I get enough views, enough videos, I'll be available to start live streaming. Um, might be able to use Periscope. Uh, I think that's for Apple or maybe Twitch if you're a gamer. Uh, Twitch might be able to support something similar uh, to a live session. And that's better than Zoom because students already have YouTube, Twitch already on their phone. So it's easy accessible to them. Free book. Uh, I've written a lab manual before for pharmacy technician. And I'm just going to use that experience uh, when I'm writing the pharmacy technician free and easy course. Free courses. ITNU, uh, free GED. A lot of schools are offering a free GED. I've taught a lot of the general ed courses, high school equivalent courses. I might make videos on those as well. Math, science um, based. Entertainment. So Dr. Aaron sings limericks, uh, biochemistry limericks. Um, maybe I'll take some jokes. <laughs> Tuition base is credentialed. So the strategy. So the IU hybrid model. So at CCSD, we have blended coursework. Half of our contact is on ground and the other half is online. So if any of my students miss a course, they can catch up with the videos I post. So we have a sea of students. And within this sea of students, Dr. Ahern posts to YouTube. He wrote his book, 90,000 downloads up to date. So that's quite a bit of money. If you're selling this textbook for 100 bucks, 200 bucks, that's nine, 20 million dollars that that people have been given free to them. I tune you about 7,000 downloads, and his songs got about 300 views. So definitely he's getting getting some hits here. Right? He doesn't advertise. He doesn't um, monetize his video. But he does provide links, and all of his links link to his other formats, the book, YouTube, and iTunes, and the songs. So those, so those are the internet students. They're unpaid. Um, they get to look. They get to experience what it is to be a student. And hopefully, that is what these videos for pharmacy technician medical specialties will do, expose the San Diego area with what uh, our school has to offer and these internet students unpaid uncredentialed uncredited students will turn into registered credit students so education 4.0 has wide-ranging uh, reach for admissions um, helping out the education department definitely these videos will help the students and in the back end placing students they know that they have a good core uh, training uh, at CCSD. Thank you all for joining me for Education 4.0. I hope you guys uh, find it interesting, and I hope more of you jump on board, not just only at CCSD and the sister campuses, Independence U, Stephen Hedinger, and what's the other one? College America. Sorry, just skipped my mind for a moment there. Well, thank you guys. That concludes Education 4.0, or is it the beginning? So look forward to seeing a uh, pharmacy technician. Free and easy <laughs> in the future. And again, thank you guys for joining me. You guys have a good day. And if you're coming to class, I'll see you. And if you don't come to class, I'll see you when you do. Bye.